When I first transferred into Riverdale in the seventh grade, I was a pretty shy and introverted kid. I had a few friends, but I didn't really like going out to parties, and I definitely didn't like being in the spotlight. I was more of a follower. But my parents, on the other hand, really wanted me to get active in my new community. They said stuff like, join clubs, find out who the leaders are, or put your name in for captain of the soccer team, like that was ever going to happen. And I asked them, why? Why do you want me to be a leader? And they said, because that's what the world is looking for. And so I thought to myself, but I'm not a leader. I'm not charismatic or funny or charming. For me, stepping out of my social comfort zone was saying hi to someone in the hallway on a good day. Why would anyone listen to me? But I complied, reluctantly, and I tried my best to be charismatic and funny and charming, which, by the way, is exhausting. But as I grew older, I came to realize that being a leader really has nothing to do with any of those things. The best leaders are the ones who can communicate with others effectively and get everyone to strive towards a common goal. You can be the most shy and antisocial person or be the most confident and outgoing person in the world. But if you want to be a good leader, you have to know how to communicate well. So, when working in a group, the most important skill a leader can have is a mastery of communication. Now, communication is broken up into two parts, verbal and nonverbal. Verbal communication is the primary means of communication for us. People can give rousing and motivational speeches and inspire others to do almost anything. But what makes it so effective? Well, for one, positive reinforcement is essential in group participation. Our minds tend to focus on the worst parts of a situation. We all do it. We blame ourselves for tiny mistakes while we ignore our great successes and achievements. So the burden is on a leader to mitigate that kind of thinking. Being able to let someone know that the mistakes belong to a collective body and not just an individual person can really help bring the group closer together. Another key factor in keeping a group focused is reflection. Reflection is a necessary skill in leadership because it reminds everyone why they're doing what they're doing, not just how to go about doing it. Being able to remind everyone of what the goal is can really help motivate the group when times get tough. But more surprisingly, being a good communicator is less about what you can say and more about what you can do. People who lead by example, for instance, are also communicating what they want you to do. It's just not as obvious. This leads to the second part of communication, which is nonverbal. Nonverbal communication comprises 93% of all communication that we have. 93%. That breaks into 55% for body language, 38% for tone of voice, leaving only 7% for spoken words. This means that everything I've been saying in the past five minutes is 7% of all the communication I've had with you. Everything I've been doing, on the other hand, how I've been inflecting my voice, how I've been moving my body, that's 93% of all communication I've had. Now, if there's one thing I hope you take away from my talk, it's that leaders are not only the ones with labels. If you think that you can't be a leader because you don't have that charisma or charm or humor, don't. For all anyone else knows, other leaders are just faking it. They, too, are the shy and introverted kids who transferred schools in the seventh grade. But because they are good at communicating with others, they become leaders. Being someone who can connect well with others will make people want to follow you. Because the world isn't really looking for good leaders. It's looking for good communicators. Thank you.